Hi, I'm Andrea. And I'm Beth. And we are moms from smartsocial.com. And this week is all about Instagram here at smartsocial.com. Andrea has done a lot of work. It's taken, what, six weeks to work (laughs) through all of the screenshots that we share about Instagram of what parents need to know to help keep kids safe on Instagram. And then great news was that just in time for our live event this week, Instagram put out the parental supervision information. So Andrea's been working really hard on that. We'll share more in just a minute after, but I'm curious, Andrea, what Instagram pages do you love following? Okay. So I love to follow the New York times because it's really nice to get like those pops of actual news, credible source that I trust. And a lot of times it's really helpful. They'll give you some great images that you can see with like headlines, or you can click on it and get to the actual article. A lot of times I realize, Ooh, I want to know that I want to read more about that. But other than like a couple news outlets, I love to cook. So I love to follow Martha Stewart. Good one. Oh man, she's a character. And a lot of times she'll post recipes or her gardening tips, but sometimes it's just really interesting to see how she lives because it's very different than my life. So it's interesting to me. I wonder what Martha Stewart would say about our virtual background kitchen here. She would approve. It looks pretty nice. Looks like some high-end appliances back there. (laughs) Yes. So Martha, New York Times. And then there's this other one called Upworthy that I really like to follow. And it's just an account that's devoted to things that make you feel good. It'll be screenshots talking about funny things their kids did, or just like a sweet moment between two people. It's just something to walk away from and you think, oh man, the world isn't so bad after all. (laughs) That's awesome. That's a good takeaway from spending time on social media is feeling uplifted because I think a lot of people don't leave with such a positive feeling. No, it can be hard to. So I do try to balance it all out. My accounts that I follow with lighthearted stuff, and then there's the news articles. And, you know, if I feel like I'm starting to get heavy with it, then I try to tell myself to just take a break and step away. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I know that you do use the time management features in Instagram. You've mentioned that on the podcast before that the warning will come up and say you've used your time for the day. So that's another great tip for parents. I think also a tip for parents, even yourself or helping your kids is to look at who you're following. You can go in and see your favorites or see who you're following and maybe unfollow. I saw one time a, a post about permission to unfollow and that really spoke to me. It was from social media. Obviously not something that I unfollowed because I got a great tip from it, but I think we all just need that permission from a friend or from ourselves. You don't have to see all of that stuff. And we found a really cool tip this week of how to only see what you follow or what you like. So other moms, if you're out there, if you feel like you spend a little too much time or you don't have the best feeling after Instagram, you have permission to unfollow. Yes. What about you? Do you have any favorites that you like to follow? Well, I'll be honest that I don't use Instagram a whole lot. I think the big biggest thing is because I don't have Facebook on my phone. That's my limit. I use Instagram to post my photos to Facebook. I don't follow a lot, but one that I recently found, it's a woman and she calls her page Family Tech. And she breaks down a lot of the things that we talk about every week at Smart Social of tips of how to be safe online for kids, for parents, control what your kids are doing, how to monitor what your kids are doing. But she really breaks them down into the real fun reels that are 10, 15, 20 seconds with audio over the top and a lot of just flashy graphics that go with it. She has a tech background, so that's where a lot of her tips come from. So for a work reason, I follow her through Instagram and it's made me ask a lot of questions in some of our resources to dig deeper and to find more information about some of the things she shares. So I like that one. It breaks down what we do into really bite-sized pieces. I'll need to look that one up to follow. And then uh, just for fun, I've mentioned it before, but I love following the Holderness family on social media. They get into some really tough topics, but they make light of it. And I think I really appreciate that because it helps me understand some of the things that are going on in the world or with our family or just topics that I didn't even know I didn't know anything about that just help me interact with other people during the day too, that it opens my world of what I can talk about or what I've seen or what I find interesting. Yeah. And that's one of those accounts that you usually walk away feeling better, feeling good. They have so much. That's one of the accounts that can very much be a rabbit hole of how You're much right. time did I just spend watching Kim? <laughs> You're right. All right. So let's take a quick break and hear from Josh about how to subscribe to that newsletter. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. 
Each week, we help parents and educators keep students safe on social media so they can someday shine online. Make sure you join our newsletter to get the most up-to-date social media alerts at smartsocial.com slash newsletter. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we send out the latest social media app resources that help parents and educators to navigate this challenging landscape with their students. Now let's get to the program. All right, we are back. And if you are a Smart Social Newsletter subscriber already, this week was all about Instagram for us. Thursday, we had our VIP live event, which is a 45 minute session of Josh going through our course about Instagram, which was the topic for this really the entire month. But it really gave parents a chance to sit down with their students, to learn all these dangers, to learn the tips and to learn how to work as a family about Instagram and keeping kids safe because they want to be there and they want to have fun. So Andrea spent a lot of time working on those slides and helping recreate everything that we share with parents and students and teachers too, because they see a lot of the outcomes at school during the day. Andrea, will you share with us a little bit about what you discovered in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, of course. So I think a place I'd like to start is talking about why students want to be on Instagram. So there's an age limit of 13, but we know that sometimes kids will lie about their age in order to to create an account because they hear so many people being on it. Josh and I sat down and talked to one of our student advisors, Sarah, a couple weeks ago, and she just had some great things to say about Instagram and the way she uses it. And her favorite part of it is to connect with her friends, both near and far. I guess she goes to some camps and that kind of thing where she has met kids in other parts of the country that don't go to school with her. And so it's being able to keep up with them without writing letters because that's what we would have done when we went to camp and met someone, we would have become pen pals and written letters or gotten their phone number and you could call every now and again. But kids get this awesome thing out here where they can see what their friends are doing from far away. And I know I have friends all over the world. And that's one of the reasons I love it too, is because I can see what people are doing. So that seemed to be a common theme for why kids want to be on there is just to see what their friends are up to. Another thing that they like to do is get inspiration and share videos and watch video edit, which I know you like to do sometimes with your kids. You guys do that, but that's one of the big reasons that teenagers want to be on there too. But she was a great kid. Her account is a private account as a teenager, which I thought was really smart. She did say that she had some friends who were, had public accounts, but she has chosen to stay private. Smart social, that's what we recommend until you're starting to look at colleges and you talk to your parents and come up with a plan. But one of our student advisors said that he isn't on it a ton, but his parents use it more than he does, which I had to laugh because my kids don't have it yet because they're just too young. But he wanted them to be aware that there are bad things on Instagram and they can happen through. People can be contacted and be targeted from predators. So he said their parents normally see the positive side of it only, and but that kids can be targeted. So I thought that was really big of him to be able able to look at that and know that was happening and wanted his parents and other adults to realize that was happening. Yeah, I saw that comment come through. So we did a survey of all of our smart social advisors as you were preparing this just to learn how students were using it and what they wanted parents to know more about. It almost made me wonder if Instagram is the new Facebook. It used to be that everybody was on Facebook because that was the option. MySpace just disappeared. So we all moved to Facebook and no kids are on Facebook anymore. So now even even one of the news articles that you showed in the Instagram course was Meta recognizes that kids are their pipeline for Instagram and they've seen a decline in kids being on Instagram. So they are targeting kids more on Instagram, which from a business sense, I get it. They have to make their money and they have to keep it going. But from a mom gut check, targeting my kids doesn't make me feel good. Tell us what else Meta has released. They're targeting our kids, but they're helping kids too. They are. So so they have finally come out with their first ever parental controls. They call it parental supervision, which I think is aptly named because is limited in what you can do. It's not so much of a control, but more of a way to supervise what your kids are doing online. And what I find the most interesting about it is, so we know that Instagram is owned by Meta, as is Facebook, as is WhatsApp and VR, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something. There's a lot of things under that umbrella. <laughs> there are, but their goal is to be able to 
supervise your kids across all of their technologies under one umbrella page, which is called their family center, which is pretty cool. It's a website where they offer educational resources as well. But from there, you can access your supervision account on your child's account. And like I said, right now they're only doing Instagram and VR through this, but they have plans to, to expand that and add more to it. But I think the biggest factor with that is right now, at least in order to set up the supervision the parental supervision through Instagram, the teenager has to be the one to initiate it. Oh, so a parent can't just set it up and say, I'm going to control what you're doing. The teenager has to initiate it and actually request supervision, which is actually really in line with what we talk about here at Smart Social. It's all about a dialogue and a conversation with your student, making it like a two-way street instead of, no, you can't do that. This is the only thing you can do. It's creating that dialogue, which I think is great because Instagram is actually encouraging that with this feature. Down the road, I believe that they may open it up to where parents can initiate it, but either way, it has to be accepted from one to the other. So, so does a parent have to have their own Instagram account to use parental supervision? They do. I think you can receive the request and if you don't have it set up yet, then you can, it'll let you know that you need to set up an account, but you can't supervise without actually having an account. So. But they don't have to be on it all the time. Parents can set up an account. You can put in your information. You can have the account. We recommend that parents use the apps that your kids are on, but it doesn't mean that you have to spend hours a day scrolling or following or liking. Just be on it, have an idea of how kids find and see what they see, and then set up those parental supervision through your account. Yeah. Because there are a few important things that you can do through the parental supervision and a few things that you can see, but it's not everything. So you can set time limits for your student and for how long they can be on the app. You can see who they're following and who follows them, but you can't really do anything about it, if that makes sense. The open right. door for a conversation about who you're following. <laughs> Yes. One thing that I don't like that I wish you could see is somehow have access to their direct messages because you can't see those or any information about those through the supervision. When it's set up to where you supervise an account. So if your student has a Instagram, a second account, they would have to ask for supervision for that account as well for you to be able to see anything on that. Yeah. If parents don't know, Instagram is the nickname for a fake Instagram account. So sometimes students will set up a whole different account that their parents don't know about and then post very different pictures or messages on that account than what their parents see. In our course, we walk parents through exactly how to look at your child's device and see what accounts they have in Instagram. Once you have your child's device in your hand, it's pretty easy to look that up. But until you actually look for yourself, you may never know if your child has a fake or a secondary account that they're hiding things on. Yeah. And one of the big known problems with Instagram has been online bullying. So one of the ways that Instagram is trying to tackle that is making it easier to report bullying, if you see it on there, or any other inappropriate or offensive content. But bullying specifically, if you decide to report something, first of all, the report is anonymous. And second of all, you don't have to just report for yourself. If you see a friend being bullied or bullying, you can report it. Once again, it's still anonymous, but you can report that for someone, which I think is really great. Like it's helping teach our kids to stand up for one another. But under the parental supervision, if they have that set up, they can let their parents know that they reported something. Instagram won't give the parent any more details other than that your child has reported something, which in turn helps start a conversation between you and your kid and hopefully open up that dialogue where you can talk more about. Yeah, and I, I think that takes a lot of trust for students to one, know that if they report, their parents are going to know they report something because that may be a turnoff to kids that they don't want their parents to know if they report something. But I think that is part of establishing your family's rules for Instagram and hopefully hopefully a line of communication that if you report something, I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to say you're automatically in trouble. I want to know about it so we can help you if you need help and talk through it because you may not know you need help with this. But if you have a gut feeling that something is wrong, I want to know and I want to 
try to help you or get you the help that you do need. And to be fair with this report, letting your parents know feature, they have the option to not let their parents know. If a kid is really nervous about it or doesn't want his parents to be bothered, they're not going to click, let their parents know. But once again, when you're setting this up, have those conversations with your kids and look, if something's going on, let me know. We'll figure it out together. One of the other things that I did find using this, so I was using it on my phone and I found that I'd set a time limit for a young adult account. And because I was doing so much of it for work, I got locked out. It came up with the, you've used up your time screen. And then I was like, oh no, I'm locked out. This is my one phone. So you're locked out. You can no longer use the account, but you can access your settings. And I did find that if you go into your settings, you can turn off parental supervision. The kid can turn the off from parental. their account, from their settings, can turn off parental supervision. So parents just beware, like this is not foolproof, just like almost all sorts of controls out there. One reason this is more of a supervision than a control anyway, is there are ways around it. Now then you will be alerted as the parent will get an alert or notification that parental supervision has been turned and then they'll have to re-request it to turn it back on. But I just thought you should know that parents that they can get in there, turn it off, and then they have full access to the app again. So there are workarounds. <laughs> yes. And there are workarounds for so many of the suggestions that we give for any of these apps and social media. There are suggestions that go very advanced into technology and links. So that's really the basis of why we always recommend a layered approach of keeping our kids safe on social media, that we have to have the conversations. We have to build the trust with our kids. We have to set expectations. We have to supervise. We have to monitor. We have to set these control settings. It's a lot, but social media is a lot. And we have a lot on our our shoulders to raise our kids with good experiences in their young lives. Yes. They're so young. They have so much ahead of them and they're so smart. Like they get things that they come up with, but they have their whole futures ahead of them. We don't want it to get derailed at such a young age because of social media or something that they experience or their takeaways. Yeah. I was thinking about it the other day that kids are on it so much because their friends and their peers are on it. It's their way to relax and their way to let go in between, hopefully in between classes, not during classes at school. But as parents, we're not on it as much. Our friends usually usually aren't talking about it the way kids talk about it. But I think that we can get ahead of knowing what the parental controls or supervision options are. We can get ahead of having the conversations with our kids and setting that foundation work for it and just working with our kids. So when something does come up, they have something to work with to make good decisions. And just remembering that there are reasons that they want to be on these different apps and they're pretty valid. So and just like you said, working with them to get a common goal and doing it safe. Yes, absolutely. That's our goal. So one thing that Josh and I discovered this week as we were doing the final touches on the course goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of who do we follow and who are our favorites on Instagram. One of the big buzzwords of the last year has been algorithms. We don't all understand and they don't want us to understand why we see what we see on a lot of social media pages. Their goal is to keep us scrolling, to keep their ad money coming in because we are seeing more things. So that is one of the big issues of all social media, the time that we spend on it and what those algorithms are doing to keep us hooked. Josh and I discovered this week a feature on Instagram that helps us really get around that algorithm. If you tap in the Instagram logo on the top left of your app, you can select to only see following or favorites in your feed. So that narrows it down a ton. When we were scrolling and testing it out, there were no ads. So that was nice. There was nothing on there that I didn't want to see because I hadn't already selected it as a favorite or something that I followed. So that was really reassuring to me that it's there. Users do have to do it every time they go in. It's not a setting that you can have every time you go in, it just limits it. But I think if you get into that habit of only doing following or favorites that you see in the feed, it could really cut down on some screen time. No, that sounds like a great tip. I'm proud of Instagram <laughs> for putting it in there. That just seems, it seems against what their main goal is to keep people scrolling and keep people engaged. But what a great feature to be able to get in there and just quickly check in and see what the people you're most interested in have been doing. And I think my favorite part of it was when you get to the end of your following or your favorites, it lists it for the last three days or the last 30 days, depending on if you're looking at your following or your favorites, but it will give you a message and says you're caught up. And that 
Yeah. That is so reassuring to know that whoever I care about on Instagram, I am caught up. Like I have seen everything because a lot of times I will just scroll and scroll and scroll thinking that I've missed something about somebody important in my life. It's fear of missing out of somebody uh-huh. that I care about. FOMO is a real thing. I just keep scrolling. But in this case, when I can narrow it down, Instagram really reassures me that you're caught up. You're okay. You can turn it off. And really I could turn it off for three days or 30 days. And it's, it's just that mental game of wanting to check in versus needing to check in. And I think this is a great option if people use it to get that gratification that you're caught up. Yeah. I love that. That's great. I I look forward to getting that. Yeah. So remember to do it. Just start the habit. Next time you log into Instagram, change it to following or favorites. And I will say it might take a couple days, a couple times to really narrow down who are your following and your favorites. I think Josh recommended that students pick five to 10 following or favorite accounts. So that could be family. It could be friends. It could be general pages like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, but to narrow it down. So don't put a thousand following or favorites on there because that will do you no good, but to narrow it down and then that will narrow down your feed. Yeah. What a great tip. I love that. Thank you. So next month's VIP topic is about Snapchat. So I think that is probably one of the top favorites at this point or will be soon if it's not already for teens. If parents are on Instagram and kids don't want to be on it anymore, it's going to Snapchat. But one of the similarities that we see between Snapchat and Instagram, and one of the big problems that I've heard a lot from schools and teachers is about disappearing messages. Can you tell us what parents can do if they're concerned about disappearing messages on Instagram? It exists on Instagram as well. They have a vanishing messages through their direct messages. It's a way that they can, if they swipe up with their in and message box and they're, if they swipe up, then it will say turn on vanishing mode. And then the message that you send to anyone in the group, if it's a group or if it's just a person will vanish as soon as everyone in the group has read the message. Honestly, I don't know really a way around that other than have your conversations with your kids about these messages and and how they can be used by bad people for bad things. Yeah. And I've heard a lot about bullying with those that then somebody goes to report it and there's no evidence. So I think one of the recommendations we've given about Snapchat is to teach kids to take screenshots. If something is there that doesn't meet their gut, they just need to take the screenshot, even though the other person will get the notification that they've taken a screenshot. If they want to do something about what they're seeing, they need to have the evidence to send it to the authorities. So parents just need to know, even if you're checking your students' messages on Instagram, they may not all be there. And it may not be a setting that your student has put on. It may be a setting that whoever they're talking to has put on. So talk with them about implications of disappearing. And it goes both ways about the screenshot that somebody else could take the screenshot and it never truly disappears. The internet is forever. Internet is forever. That's a good one. (laughs) All right. So Instagram is a big topic. Thank you for doing all the work about digging into it and finding the safety tips. I think from more mom perspectives that we can get into our courses, hopefully the more moms we can help Mm -hmm. and moms, teachers, grandparents, whoever is listening to our podcast or watching our resources at smartsocial.com, know that you can always reach out to us. If you have questions, there's other people out there who are going to have those questions. So we want to know what you're asking, what you're looking for, and we want to try to help you. So reach out smartsocial.com slash contact is a great way to contact us. If you are in a smartsocial.com course or on one of our blog pages, you can scroll down to the bottom and there's a comment section and the whole team sees those comments that come in and we will jump on questions as soon as we can. So don't hesitate to reach out. Our goal is to help you find the answers that you need. So let us know what questions you're asking. Yep. Totally agree. We want to hear from you. Awesome. All right. So that's it for us this week. Thanks for joining us and we will join you again next week. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you for listening to the smartsocial.com podcast with this week's topics from Beth and Andrea. If you enjoyed the mom talk discussion that we had today about all things social media from a mom's perspective, we invite you to join the smartsocial.com VIP program. As a very informed parent VIP member, you will learn about the dangers and benefits of social media for your kids and get tips every week to keep your family safe online and most importantly, to teach your students how to shine online. 
We have over 130 detailed app guides that cover apps like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and 100 plus apps you might not have heard of, but your students may have visited or downloaded. Find out more and join today at smartsocial.com slash VIP. Please remember to rate, subscribe, and review so we can continue to help more parents and educators just like you. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. As always, remember to keep it light, bright, and polite. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day.